A while back, I built this DIY jointing jig. Now, this can also be used as a tapering jig as well, but I'm not gonna go into that aspect here in this video. The most common comment that I get on this are people saying that they don't see how you can make a parallel cut with the other side of the board. And the first couple of times I read those comments, I thought, what? Because my thought was, why would you want to do that? That's what a rip fence is for. Because traditionally, if you had a jointer, you wouldn't take a board and joint one edge on your jointer and then flip it over and joint the second edge on your jointer as well. What you would do is after you're, you jointed your first edge, you would then take it over to your table saw, set up your rip fence, and the side that you jointed on your jointer is then ran against the fence in order to joint the second edge of the board. So my initial thought with those comments was, why would you want to do that? But then I thought, well, wait a second, there's gotta be something deeper at work here and I need to figure out what that is. So after thinking about this for a bit, I came to the conclusion that there is this thought process by many people about how they're supposed to go about jointing boards that is, and I, I don't want to say incorrect because how you go about doing something is your business. It's not for you, me, or anyone else to say that it's incorrect, but I would say that it's not how I would go about doing it. And therefore, because our thought processes may be different on how you go about jointing boards, to those people, this jig doesn't make a lot of sense. So I'm gonna go over the technique that I use to joint boards, and I'm gonna use tools that I have at my disposal, and one of those tools is a thickness planer. Now I understand that a lot of people may not have one because let's face it, these things can run some money. A thickness planer is one of those tools that I do, but then again, I don't recommend. It depends on you, what you do, and how often you do it. If all you do is two or three projects a year, it's probably not worth it to drop the cash you need to bring one of these into your shop. I do the math like this. By having this in my shop, I'm gonna use certain materials that have either been scrapped or reclaimed lumber that I wouldn't otherwise use. So is the cost of that material greater than the cost of the machine over a certain period of time? This machine that I have came with a three-year warranty and cost me around $250. So will the material that I use because I have this in my shop be more than $250 over that three year time span. If you're only doing two or three projects a year, the answer is probably no. However, in my shop, I'm pushing 50 plus projects a year through here, so I probably make that back in about six months time. Makes sense for me. You, however, are gonna have to take into account what it is that you do and how often you do it, as I said earlier. Enough with that, jointing boards. There are two faces to a board, both here and here, and then obviously two edges, which would be here. I always start jointing boards with the faces. So here I have a board that has a pretty severe twist in it. What I'm gonna do is pick a high spot on this board and fill in the gap so that it no longer rocks back and forth. In this instance, some thin strips of scrap that I happen to pick up off the ground is gonna work for me here. And that gets me pretty close. And then all I have to do is layer some blue tape and then that will take up the slack. And as you can see here, after the first pass, it just takes off the material at that high point. After a few passes, you can see the effect here. Once I have a clean face on one side, I can then take off the blue tape, flip it over, and plane the other side. Now, the faces of boards don't always need to be jointed, but assuming that they do, I always start with them first. Why? Because that process that I just walked you through always leaves the edges of the boards out of square, and what we need to do is go ahead and square them back up. Now, if you're not jointing the faces of a board, then this is where the process would begin for you. So I have my jointing jig and mine just happens to run in the miter slot. And I did that for stability purposes only. I'm gonna place the board on this jig and all I'm gonna do is make sure that every part of the edge of this board is hanging over the edge of the jig. It's the same principle as if you were using a jointer. It's no different. You would run it through the jointer until every bit of the edge had been plain. Don't worry about anything else, only that. Then. Just run it through the table saw. Now I am done with that jig. I don't flip the board over and try to line up a parallel cut using this jig. It just simply is not designed for that and there's no reason why I would design it for that because, well, 
that's what your rip fence is for, parallel cuts. So then I'll just set my rip fence at a distance that'll cut at least a little bit off every inch of the other side of that board and just run it through per norm. And there I have a jointed board that is both straight and true, simple and easy style. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook and Pinterest. You can stay up to date on all the latest news. Visit simplyeasydiy.com for all sorts of DIY projects, both great and small, to help you out on your DIY journey. Until then.